Today we're at Northern Essex Community College, and right with me is Chris Obert, who will explain a little bit about what this event is all about, if you don't mind. Um, well, the name of the event is New England Authors Expo. Um, it's a grassroots event put on by the authors themselves to help mm -hmm. promote each other Very and good. themselves. Excellent. Um, the first book event we ever did was in Haverhill at the Haverhill Public Library. Okay. That was in 2006, and it was just a bunch of local authors um, getting together to promote their books and do a book signing, you right, know, and, right. and sell the books. It went so well that we started doing them more often. Um, in 2012, we came up with the name New England Authors Expo because we used to, all our events had like a different name. Mm -hmm. So there was, nobody was remembering who we were. Once you have a name, you know, people can associate you with the, with the New England Authors Expo brand. For sure. Very Even, very. and so we have authors, publishers, illustrators, um, and all kinds of support people that attend the events. We've had lawyers and translation services. Um, what else? We've had editors and proofreaders, um, cover designers, um, artists, Great. you know, to do I mean, anything that's involved with publishing, whether it's book or blog, newspaper, magazine, we try and invite everyone. Um, we call it the New England Authors Expo because we want everyone from all of New England to right. feel invited, but we also have people that come from all over the country for sure for to sure. the event. What I thought was impressive, you also have an attorney that can talk a little bit to these authors yeah. about a better way of uh, making sure that their book is successful. Yeah, at this event we have a financial advisor mm -hmm. um, because a lot of authors, they don't realize that when they're working on the book, when the book is finished, they become a salesman and a small business owner. For sure. So they have to learn marketing skills and they also have to learn bookkeeping skills yeah. and how to be able to put a little bit of their proceeds away. Right. So we have a financial advisor. Um, we have lawyers attended in the past that specialize in intellectual property rights. So that if um, you wanted a logo, uh, a, a trademark your logo or one of the, your, you know, your company's name Beautiful. or a character in your book or, or say some movie studio approached you and said we would like to do a movie right. with your book. Right. Well, you need to talk to someone that understands that For sure. stuff. You're so right. we've had lawyers attend. We've had companies that do um, book trailers, mm -hmm. which are like um, when you go to the movies, you see a coming attraction for the next movie. Yeah, they're right. making book trailers, which are coming attractions for books. Okay. Um, so we've had companies that make them. Um, we've had people that do audio books and um, ebook people. So um, it's, it's you never know who's going to show up. You could be right, sitting at the right. table next to you. And the authors have all different kinds of fiction, non-fictional. Yeah, uh, uh, everything. From all different topics, yes. right? Yes, yeah, and what we try to do is connect them together, um, create a network. Yeah. So that if you write sci-fi, you can find other sci-fi writers. Yeah. And maybe swap books and read each other's books to write reviews because their target audience is your target audience. Yeah, sure. You know, one sure. of the things that we've, uh, we've been very successful at is if you're a children's book author, but you only know one children's illustrator, mm -hmm. you don't have much of a career because that illustrator might say, well, I can do your book next year. Yeah, right, Or right, if you're right, a children's right. book illustrator and you don't know authors, and, you, and you, you know, your friend that's an, uh, the, the author only wrote one or two books, yeah. you don't have much of a career. So you need to meet other people to be able to become more successful. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things that we do, um, is help people find um, the help they need. Right. You know, we had one woman, uh, whenever you're talking to authors, you always say, how are things going, how's sales? Right, for sure. And she told me, she says, um, that her book was selling like crazy in France but not in the United States. And I said, I didn't know you wrote a book about France. And she says, I didn't. She goes, it's just a fluke. And I said, well, that's great. You know, who cares where it sells as long as yeah, it's selling right, well. Right. And she goes, well, my publisher is concerned because they thought we should have the book translated into French and it would sell even better. Huh. And she says, how am I going to have my book translated into, you know, French? Well, she was, me and her were talking in front of a table that the name of the company was Bilingual Solutions uh -huh. that helped with oh, translation oh, services. So I just said, uh, you know, that's look great. at that table right there, you know, and she was like, oh my God, thank you. Oh, and I was like, well, it's not me, it's them. Right, right. So, you know, a lot of people, they credit me with all of the stuff that happens. It's not, it's, it's us. Yeah. Um, all of the different services and all of the different knowledge that all the other people have, we share it with each other. You know, um, and it's uh, and you learn a lot because right, it's right. not, it's it's not cutthroat. It's friendly competition. Um, when I had the first book event, you know, and we were all showing each other. This was when self-publishing was new. Yeah. Um, and everybody was showing off their books. 
the person that had, unfortunately, the ugly cover, mm -hmm. when they saw what was possible with the other covers, when they came with their next book, their cover was oh, unbelievable. Yeah, good, you know, or of a person story. that, you know, um, wrote their first book, but there was a lot of typos in it. And, and you would say, you know, we would point out, hey, I don't know if you know, but your book had some typos. You know, here's my business card of the person that proofreads for me. So, so it's, by, it's a network yeah. opportunity as well. And so what it does is not only helps you to sell more books, but it also helps you to become a better author, right, right. a better salesman, a better business person, you know, um, and, and, and improve your, you know, your, your craft, you know, improve your books. I'd like to talk a little bit about, um, if you don't mind, a, a little bit about your background. Okay. I had no background in, in, in being an author or running a publishing yeah. company. Um, I worked for 20 years in high-tech manufacturing and lost my job when the tech bubble burst oh, yes, in right. 2001. Uh, I went back to school to Northern Essex yeah. and graduated three times. And while I was going to school, my family had a reunion and I was the family tree guy. Yeah. So I gave everyone at the reunion all the family tree stories and photos right. on a disc. The older generation said, what the heck is this? Where's the book? <laughs> so um, I, I found a person that owned their own printing company, yeah. and he taught me the ropes and what I needed, to, the skills I needed to turn my, my disc of different stories and pictures into a manuscript to have it printed. And I had so much fun, um, and I wasn't able to find very many jobs because the tech bubble just burst, yeah. and there wasn't many high-tech jobs. Um, I started getting a couple of little jobs just writing, and I just started enjoying that. And I joined a local writers group in Haverhill, and I helped them to produce a book. Yeah. And they said, hey, the book is finished now. We need to have an event. Mm. Um, so I, I had an event at the Haverhill Public Library and invited other local authors to come. So my, my writing and my publishing and my book events all happened by accident all at the same time. Absolutely. Um, so now today, you know, 2019, um, I have over 2,000 people on my contact list for the expo. Great. You know, I've published with Pear Tree Publishing, which is my publishing company, um, about 35 completed projects. Beautiful. And, um, you know, and, uh, I ha you know, I have my finger in all kinds of different things, you know, um, right. I, and uh, I'm still learning. Right. Um, so, so last, could you give some... Um a little bit of help to those who well, might be looking to print a book or write well, the, a book? The, the first thing I always say is that um, the more you read, the better you can write. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if you're exposed to great writers, right. hopefully you'll be able to absorb some of it as you're reading it. Um, so that's the first thing I always give as advice. Um, read as much as you can, right. especially if in the genre that you want to write in. Um, the second thing is don't be afraid to ask questions. You know, um, I've been doing this since um, 2006, mm -hmm. and I'm still learning new, you know, something new every day. Right. Um, what else? Um, you know, don't be afraid to, you know, some people um, have a, a fear of speaking in public. Yeah. I do too. You know, no one is really that comfortable speaking. But um, you need to overcome that if you're going to be selling your book to the public. Uh, but if the thing is, is if, you, if you become friends with the other authors around you, it's not so much work as it is enjoyable. You know, it becomes right, right. more fun, and you can learn a lot from them. So and go uh, to other and, expos and stuff like that. Yeah, so, actually, yeah, a lot of yeah, the, yeah. A, a lot of since I started doing this, a lot of events have started happening because the authors that have come to my events oh, now yeah. run authors events at their local library right, right. or in their region. You know, when they ask me, is that okay? I'm like, sure, it's okay. You know, it's, we all want to sell more books and we all want more exposure. So uh, why not? Now, another thing that's great about the events, now this doesn't have, well, I guess it does have stuff to do with the publishers and the authors that attend, but librarians and bookstore owners and museum curators mm -hmm. come to these events because they need to have um, content. They need to have events happening at their location, whether they're a library, a bookstore, or a museum. Mm -hmm. right. And by attending one of these events, you can meet 50 authors all at the same time and kind of like say, oh, I liked your book. Can you come and speak at right, our, right. our location? Sure. So um, by helping the authors, we're also helping a lot of local small businesses, yeah. you know, the library, the bookstore, the, you know, the museums have people be at their events, mm -hmm. you know, and have, have things happening all over the place. Very good. Hey, talk a little bit about your table. Yeah, we haven't even gotten that right, far well, yet. Um, yep. These are these are books that um, yeah, I've I'll published with Pear Tree Publishing. Okay. 
And they're children's books, um, local history books, memoirs, poetry. Um, I help authors to self-publish. Yeah. So what I do is when they have a project, whatever, whatever it is, I help them as best as I can with it to make it as fine a, a book as possible. Right. I'm also friends with other authors because I sell all of these books on my Patriot Publishing website. Mm -hmm. But I also sell books that I didn't publish from friends of mine that are authors. And these are the books that I sell on my website for other authors. And these books I didn't publish. And I always keep them separate because yeah. I don't want anyone to think I'm ever taking credit for some other publisher's work. Right. Um, I like three years lost in space. Yes, Mark. Sealed with a kiss is another yes, interesting one. Yep. So Mark got it, um, who played um, Don West on Lost in Space, yeah. comes to our events, comes <laughs> to the expo events. And when he's not able to attend, I sell his books for him. Oh, right. uh, Marian Esposito, oh, right, you know, who right. is the host PBS of Chow Italia, like she has the longest running cooking show in uh, American history. Right, right. She comes to our event whenever it fits into her schedule. Right. And if not, I sell her books. And these are all signed too, yeah. so you know that they can, if their fans yeah. come, they're signed. Um, Lydia Chris, which is the wife of Peter Chris, the original drummer from Kiss. Right, right. Um, this is a collection of um, her, her, her scrapbook. Yeah of early days of KISS, and um, so I sell the book for her, and um, Legendary my, Locals of Haverhill is another well, yeah, well, one this, Well, yet. this book, um, my wife and I wrote, um, but we didn't publish it, um, Acadia Publishing published it, and um, uh, uh, Acadia Publishing publishes all of the local right, history books right. all across the country. Sure. Well, they came up with an idea for a new series of books called Legendary Locals, which are all the famous people right. from that town. And for some reason, they picked Haverhill, Mass, oh, to be the very first book in the series, the flagship book. Oh, and they great. asked my wife and I to write it. Um, and this was a challenge because when we were working on it, we had no idea, because this is the first book, right. what it was going to look like. Beautiful. So it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, the book that I've had the most success with was... A, I'm not bragging, but it was a book that my wife and I also wrote about um, all the vineyards and wineries of New England. Very good, actually. So um, this book sold very well, and um, well, you know, wine. I, I think there was a market there even before I wrote it. For you sure, know, for sure. Great. I'm glad I'm here. All right. I'm glad you came. All right. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> something to write about. Yes. Yeah, something to write right. about.